creating a settlement model or rock strata model in 12D. 12D's got a panel that sits under design more settlement and it was written to, to create a settlement model in your project. Essentially it would be you went out on site and you surveyed a piece of land and, and you picked up maybe some control points and picked up the levels of those points and then you'd go back to the same piece of land later on and those control points levels would have subsided or, or settled and then you wanted to create a, a new surface from that original ground model um, based on the, how much the ground had dropped and that's why this was put in here and that's why it's called settlement but I want to actually go through a, a second scenario here scenario B where you could use the same tool in a slightly different way and we can create a, a rock strata model which is a, a tin under your existing ground which would represent a rock model and it would be based on some boreholes you would have received so this is a typical site map of your project that you would receive and it gives you the locations of all the different boreholes and they've been numbered there so you know where each of the boreholes has been taken and in addition to that you would get a, a log similar to this like a borehole log which essentially is a diagrammatic representation of the, the drill that they did and what material they found at what depths and from that information you could determine how deep the rock is switching over to 12d now so you can see here i've got an existing project and on the left here i've just got some borehole rock levels that i've created from those logs that i received and essentially i would have I've received that from the from the company doing the boreholes and essentially it's given me the the borehole name the x y and z level there that's the surface level and then what level is the rock how deep is it and then from that we can calculate an rl for the rock level so i've just reformatted that data and just taken out the information i don't need so i've got the four columns there x y z and name for the rock boreholes from that tab there I've got a little text file here which is essentially the same information but it's in a, a CSV file so, so the first column there is your X then we've got a comma Y comma Z and then the last column there is the borehole name or the test pit name there so to read in that text file or that CSV file I've just gone under file data input XYZ and use the last one there the general option now I've created a parameter file here so I'll just pick that and read that just to show you so obviously you did put your file in there we need to read and then the key here is in the format tab which you tell 12d what if information is in what column so the column one two three four the X, Y, Z and string name and that's the panel that's created the the bull hole points there you can see so I can just toggle on the Z values so you can see they're all they've got levels and also the the names and they're the different names for all the different bull holes that I received so I'll just turn those off and the names just in extents there and I'll just add the tin on here you can see there that's the existing tin sitting um, yeah over those bull holes there so the settlement option you can find under design more and it's settlement now just pop that over there to the side okay so the first thing we need to put in here is the model that it's going to use to create the the rock strata model here so at the moment I've just got a tin of the existing ground but I just need the, 
tin to be converted to 3D faces. So I can put that in that first option there. So just come under tins, utilities. I'm not sure if we used this one before, but this will create tin faces from a triangulation. So I'm going to pick my tin, my survey tin, and I'm going to create a new model. I'm just going to call this one faces for the tin survey. And just process on that and finish on that one. So over here on the right hand side, let's make sure the vertices is off, the Z values are off. Yep, that's all good. Just going to add that new model in here. So you can see it looks like the same model as on the left hand side there. But essentially, if I toggle on the vertices, you'll see there's actual vertices there. And these are the triangles and also Z values as well. So it's converted a tin to 3D faces. And if I do a string inquiry there, you'll see they're proper strings, super strings that I can pick and inquire on. And that's the model that we're going to put in, in that option there. So I'm just going to turn off my Z values and vertices there. So I put in that new model that I just created in that option there for the faces tin survey. Now the next option that we, it needs, it needs a settlement tin. So how much has the ground settled? That's why it's called settlement tin. But in our case, we need to know what the difference is between the existing ground tin and these borehole uh, locations. So I'm just going to triangulate all up my boreholes first up. So just go to tins, create, triangulate data. And I'm just going to call this borehole. So this is a tin of just the boreholes themselves. And the model is the borehole rock levels, which are those borehole models there. Just going to triangulate that up. And I'm done with that one. I'm just going to put, maybe take that off there, put the ball hole on this side, and also add the tin on there, just so we can see that clearly there. So that's your triangulation of your ball holes. And the next thing we need to do then is we need to get the difference in height between those ball holes and the existing ground. And we can do that by going under tins utilities and there's a tool here to get the Z difference from two tins. So what model do we want these levels to appear on? We actually want the borehole levels. So essentially we'll get a new point created at each of those borehole locations and it will give us the level difference between the two tins. So the original tin is the survey and the new tin is the borehole. And we'll give it a tin name, a, a model name. Borehole difference. So this is the difference at the borehole locations. Just hit process and finish on that one. And I'll just take these two off here. And yeah, now we've got a new model which is the borehole difference. Probably a little bit hard to see, they're just little red dots. Just turn on the vertices, and you can see there, they're the same, same points. And this time, if we turn on the Z values, we'll just get the, the height difference between those two tins that we selected. So essentially, that, that borehole there, it's negative one, which means it's one meter the rock is one metre deep and then the value on that string is minus one and you can see some of the other ones minus 0 0.5, 0 0.6 and negative 1.5. So now that we've got this difference model we can triangulate that up. 
create a tin of that difference. So just come down to tins, create, triangulate data, and pull whole difference. And we can leave the colors fine. And now the model that we want to triangulate is that model there, which is the borehole difference. And just triangulate, and that's that's done that for us quite happily. And that's essentially the 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 option you need to put here. So the borehole difference is the the sediment tin there that we need. We can leave the other two values as the default. And now we just need to put in a prefix for the model name and I'll just call this rock and essentially it's going to put that that name um, after that rock model there. So it's going to create a new model for us. Just go process. It's saying some of the, the data is outside the, the settlement tin. Uh, which is fine. I might just save this panel here, just dump it out. If you haven't done that before, if you click on the left here on the cube, you can come down to dump and we can save that, dump that out and finish. And we can finish on it, just so we can call that up a little bit later on if we need to. So we can finish on that. Now let's turn that model on. Just go to my plus button and it's the rock faces tin survey model there. And you can see there are lots of levels and lots of vertices. We just come in a bit closer. And you can see there it's actually a super string uh, 3D faces which represents the rock surface. So now we just need to create a tin from that data. So just come to tins, create, triangulate data. Just going to get a little tin name called rock and maybe not green let's change it to dark red and what do we want to triangulate and that's that mock there then just go triangulate that up and that's it finish on that one yeah i'm just going to minimize that view there i've got a section view up here and i've just created a couple of Sort of sections through the site there that we can see. Just going to profile one of those. And if we just add the, the tin survey to start off with, just fit the view. You can see there that's the existing tin through that string there. First up, if we just had the borehole tin on here, you can see clearly that's the, the borehole data we initially triangulated, which essentially is just a a triangulation that one there just be between the different boreholes and clearly in some areas it's popping out of the ground there that's clearly not not quite representing the rock model underground so if we add on the the rock model now that we've created you can see clearly it's used that top ground tin and as a basis for that and then it's created this new tin, so I might just turn off that borehole tin so it's not in the way. So you can see clearly there, it, it, it's, it's a little bit sort of deeper there on the left hand side. And then as you move to the right here, you can see that the difference in height is getting narrower, it's getting less. And it's linearly adjusted that ground model down by the difference in heights to create this new rock model tin for you. Use the arrows there to go to some of the other cross sections there. So you can see here again, quite clear there on the right hand side here, it's not that deep. And then as you move your mouse through this area, the rock is getting a little bit deeper there. It's also worth mentioning that you can see here on the left hand side, the, the red rock tin is following the existing ground model there. So if I do an inquiry on that one there, you can see there, because there's no borehole sort of information in that area, the rock tin just follows the original sort of tin there, which is the survey tin. And there's a tool under tins, 
inquiry. We can get the depth between tins here as well. We haven't used that one before. Uh, we can just put the original tin, here's the survey tin, and the rock tin would be that rock tin there that we've created. So you can see here you're on the right hand side, we're sitting at sort of 0 0.4 depth for the rock. And as we move our mouse, we sort of get you know around the 1.4, 1.5 sort of area there. That's done a pretty good job for us. And then this is as well another example of the tin through that area. And this one really describes it well, because if I had the borehole tin through there, clearly that was the initial borehole green tin there. And now we've got the rock tin coming up, showing quite accurately. Yeah, and that's how we can use this option to, to create a rock model, as you can see here. Thanks for watching.